What is up everyone? I'm Scratch. Welcome to the channel. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. Happy Easter everyone and hope you guys are gonna have an amazing day together with the, with the loved ones. In today's video, we're gonna do a Hydra takeover. So we're actually on Tommy's account. We have uh, quite a few amazing champions on the account guys, but we do have a bit of a struggle with the structure of the team. So we are aiming at a team for a Nightmare Hydra clan boss. Now I'm not usually doing a lot of uh, takeovers as videos on the channel guys but just because even though he has amazing champions on the account i thought that uh it will provide you uh with a good example on how we are going to pick the team for a uh, hydra and why are we going to use those uh specific champions uh to be to be more specific you know so right here guys how you may notice tons and tons of uh of awesome champions now the main thing that we are kind of like uh struggling to find is to have a very good provoker in a, in the team that does more than provoke right so you could bring of course a war chief in the fight and he's going to provoke but he's not really doing anything else whatsoever so instead uh, i think we're going to go with harima harima will have this provoke on the a3 on a three turn cooldown which means that we need to make her fairly fast if we want to make sure that uh, we're going to be able to kind of like uh, keep up the step with the uh, with the uh, uh, head of decay even though it's gonna be pretty pretty fast thankfully we have a grand oak pad rake which is gonna be amazing in the in the hydra we're definitely going to to use him we have a uh, mishinaki who's going to be part of the team as well not only that he will bring the hex but he will bring the defense down and decrease attack which is going to be very very important we're going to uh put in the team as well uh Newt, which is going to bring enemy max HP. We're going to need it on the on the higher difficulties, uh, considering that he might not have the best possible gear, right? Uh, I've done a bit of a browsing on uh, on his account, and the gear doesn't look uh, that amazing. But I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys uh, uh, what we're gonna do in a, in a second. So he's basically going to bring this uh, this skill to the to the table. I'm not going with uh with lydia guys even though i am very tempted by that defense down and weaken i could use a different provoke champion in here which of course will be strategos islin the thing is that uh, this is on a basic skill the provoke right we have decreased speed aoe which is very very nice it decreases the duration of buffs you have this uh skill which can be a great mischief uh uh target right the only problem is the head of decay is force affinity so we cannot count on this champion as a hydra provoker at least for this rotation so because of it i'm not going to to use him then we need a block buffs champion thankfully and is actually uh, a very very solid option i was really uh prepared to bring in son wukong for block buffs which is not a optimal uh, idea for hydra nightmare especially if you don't have crazy gear but he has a Tuhanarak, which is kind of like hidden down here. So Tuhanarak is going to do an, uh, an amazing job uh, as a block buffs, more decrease attack, increase speed, decrease speed, and increase defense, just to provide us with a slightly better survivability. And of course, to increase the damage on all of our defense nukers, because we will be using uh, quite a few of them. Now, the main thing with Tuhanarak, she is not very auto-friendly, okay? She's not very auto friendly, unfortunately, because this skill will just do whatever. And uh, sometimes, if the target has a lot of debuffs on, it might spread the wrong debuffs. So that will uh, will be a bit wonky. Usually, with Tuhana Rack, you have to retry the run a couple of times to to get it up and running uh, to to be perfect. You know, we do have a I think a B Vault on the account, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe maybe somewhere in the in the vault, which can as well be a pretty a pretty good option as a as a provoker. I decided to go with Harima because we're getting uh, more damage from uh, from there. And the main thing that I'm kind of like lacking at the moment will be more damage. Now, Ugo is a pretty solid option for uh, for block buffs as well. So let me just quickly see what builds we have on the team. So this is his Harima. Doesn't look very good at all. So looking forward to give her a proper a proper build uh as the sixth champion i think i'm going to go either with elva either with duchess i haven't decided just yet the problem that i will encounter anyway it will be the mischief right the mischief is going to to create us some issues so 
Probably I'm going to run Elva just because of it. I'm going to be able to control the head, uh, the head of Mischief a bit better. Newt, this is the build that he has. Looking forward to change this build on, on Newt as well. And uh, the rest of the champions that we have right here probably are not going to be used. So uh, the rest of them, uh, they definitely need to have a, to have quite a bit of a, a bit of a rework. Mishinaki, not looking very good either. Looking forward to, to change the build. Then we have Elva. Looking forward to change her build as well. She's extremely, extremely slow. I would have liked to use the, the Bunny as well. Uh, Razalvark, he has pretty good uh, damage overall. Good utility in her kit. But because we have, of course, uh, uh, Tuhanarak, we're not going to, to need him, you know. So he's going to need a, a, a new build as well because he doesn't have one. But that's basically how uh, we're looking, guys. I'm going to build the champions, do the masteries, prepare the team, and... Uh, then I'm going to walk you through the entire run while we're doing it and show you the builds and everything else that you need to know about this Hydra takeover. So here we are, guys. I do have a bit of a preset, and that's mainly just to kind of like prioritize the right skills on the champions. Like Mishinaki prioritized the A2. Uh, of course, Harima prioritized the A3. Newt, don't use the A2. Prioritize the A3. If we're using the A2, it's not bad for damage. He's going to get actually a bit of extra damage. If the Head of Mischief will get to steal the counterattack and spread it, that will be a bit of a problem because I'm not going to uh, do this on manual, you know? Like, I will kind of, like, assist the AI by clicking sometimes on the right heads. Uh, the main reason, we don't have a lot of AoE damage, right? And uh, we got to make sure we are targeting the right heads to rescue our champions uh, out of there. To Hanorak, uh, prioritizing the A2. And uh, we don't really have anything uh, on him. But that being said... Let's crack on with the, with the run, guys, and uh, pray for the best. So we got block buffs on everybody. Ally attack. We're not going to have, uh, basically, any, any hacks for the moment because we're putting defense down first. We are going to prioritize, of course, the head of uh, Decay to take that down first. We're hitting the cap, more or less, uh, anyway, without defense, uh, defense down, you see. So for the moment, we do have Elva as being the mischief target but that will change later on uh, to hanarak will become the mischief target every now and then and that will kind of like throw off a bit our mischief targeting but that is uh is fine you know now from here on because we have hex i want to prioritize and target ahead of uh, mischief the faster i drop that head down which is the squishiest anyway the better i get to control the rest so when this happens like you see just there we had uh, to hanarak being the the mischief uh, target i haven't really necessarily made the speed tune perfectly on to ensure that everybody's kind of like cutting in at the wrong uh, at the right moment because even if i'm doing that even if i'm doing that what's going to happen is that it's out of my control i cannot ensure that that will be the case every time especially when the head of mischief will basically steal uh steal termiter from one of my champions that will instantly throw the the tune off you know so it's pretty hard to make a tuning here how you may notice, we managed to overlap the head of um, the head of decay. The reason why I have that retaliation set on a Tuhanarak, guys, is basically every now and then she's gonna have a chance to counterattack, and if she gets to counterattack and put that decreased speed on whoever attacked her, is a win-win for us, you know. So uh, that's why we have that uh, retaliation set on her. It's nothing, uh, nothing too crazy, you know. I wish I would take the Head of Mischief down ASAP, but by the looks of it, we're just not going to be able to, to take it down just yet. And in a way, I wish I would have went with Resistance onto Hanarak as well to basically try and, uh, and keep the Head of Mischief busy. Extra turn, hopefully we're going to use the A3, kill him, drop the Termiter on the Head of Decay, and provoke him. But it seems like it's not going to happen. Maybe we're still going to be able to overlap him. No. Unfortunately, uh, not, you know. So right now, he stole two buffs from us. We were, like, a little second uh, slower to, to provoke the head, of the, uh, the head of Decay before, you know. Pretty unfortunate, actually. Okay, so we have decreased attack there. Uh, we have some hacks on. I have a feeling that we got resisted on the block buffs, and that's what, uh, what happened there. I think so. Now, that can cause an issue if, uh, if we got uh, resisted on the block buffs. Because uh, right now, the Head of Mischief managed to steal those buffs from us. And the main issue that is going to be here is the continuous heal, you know. That's, uh, that's the main issue. And it seems like, again, you see, 
that's what Tuhana Rack does uh, bad on auto. She just takes random, random debuffs and she spreads them around. And how you may notice, there is no continuous heal spread on the... Uh, no uh, block buff, sorry, spread on the on the rest of the heads. That's why with her, you always need to make sure you're targeting the head that has the least amount of uh, debuffs to ensure that uh, you have a much higher chance to uh, to put the block buffs on uh, on the on the enemy. Or always try to put the A2 on the head of mischief. Like that, you're going to ensure that you landed the block buffs on that head that. Uh, is really important to have it, and uh, on the rest is not such a big deal anymore. So right now we drop that one. The next head that I really want to take down right now is the head of uh, the head of DK, of course. How you may notice the damage output is not insane, right? How I mentioned, we don't have a lot of AOE damage. We are relying on Newt to bring most of the damage through enemy max HP hits, uh, having the hex on the rest of the, the heads to actually bump a bit uh, uh, a bit of extra damage. Harima will bring some damage, but nothing too crazy, okay? Do not expect to see insane damage from her or from uh, Mishinaki, really. Mishinaki will get a lot of damage because of Hex, but just in general, he will not do a lot of damage because their uh, damage builds are pretty weak, especially for Nightmare, you know? Like, uh, the Hydra heads are pretty tanky here, and uh, it's definitely not going to, to be an easy, easy life, basically, you know? Okay, block buffs. Hopefully the Head of Mischief won't be spawning back right now. No, we have the Head of Blight. Uh, pretty bad as well. We, we won't be able to put block buffs on him because uh, Tuhana Rack just used the skill before. I don't think she'll get it back in, uh, in time, you know. But I might be wrong. Maybe she's gonna spread burn after and that's, uh, that's fine, you know. But the Head of Decay needs to, needs to basically go down. That's the, the main priority right now. Defense down on everybody. Uh, Mishinaki is the defense down uh, champion, guys. We will get quite a few weak hits on force heads. You know, it's nothing that we can uh, we can do about it. But the head of uh, decay is much lower now, and probably we are going to be able to provoke the head again before he's taking a turn. You see, Harima just dealt for uh, just dealt around 200k damage with her A2, so it's not a lot of uh, it's not a lot of damage, you know. Gotta make sure we're taking the head of decay down before uh, before he cleanses again, though. There we go. Provoked. Beautiful. 100k hit from Harima's A3. It's not a lot of damage. You know what I mean? Uh, we have two spirit heads as well, if I'm not mistaken. So the most important thing will be to ensure that we are basically targeting the, the right heads uh, to free our champions like when we have this sort of situation like we had right now targeting the head of a suffering when a newt has his a3 available is going to be massive massive damage so this team on manual will probably deal almost double the damage than on auto guys because you're able to control every skill you're able to decide on who you're using each one of the skills same with mishinaki i i want to target all the weak hit, uh, all the weak heads with the rest of the champions with their basic skills. So Mishinaki proxies passive and targets that uh, that head as well, you know, and is is a much higher damage. Like, is an insane boost of damage if you do that actually. Okay, so that that head is going down. You see, like right now, because we don't have a lot of AOE damage, it's gonna be a bit slower to free our champion. But hey. When we have a burn ticking on uh, one of the heads, that will uh, help us quite a bit. We managed to get that done as well. Then you have, of course, Harima doing her uh, own thing. She's targeting the decapitated head, even though it's strong affinity, which is a bit, uh, bit bad. It should not happen. But we are at 20 million damage, turn 47, 7 minutes in. And uh, the damage is, is pretty good, considering that uh, we have no Savage, we have no Acrisia, uh, we have... Uh, no Taras, none of the crazy champions that deal a lot of damage in here, you know. Except Nut, which of course is going to be pretty solid. And Mishinaki here too. But look at that, you see? The difference from targeting uh, a different head, where you hit 200k per hit, so you bring 600k in total from Nut's A3, or you bring 1.5 million, right? It's, it's massive. So targeting the head of, uh, the head of uh, Suffering with his A3 as often as possible, is going to be absolutely massive. 
that will boost the damage a lot as well from uh, uh, Hex to Mishinaki, which again is very, very helpful. Harima probably stacked her uh, A2 by now, I would assume. Harima does help with uh, the secret skill from the Head of Rat. The Head of Rat ignores the defense with that skill. Look at this. This was such a bad RNG. Unbelievable. As soon as the head spawned, he actually put Blight, uh, put a Toxic Cloud on. And the only thing that I could do right now, we cannot even provoke, so he's definitely going to cleanse. Uh, the only thing I, I could have done was to try and find a head that has HP burn. And then with, uh, with to Hanarak, to try and spread the HP burn on the head of uh, Saf uh, the head of Decay, sorry, and then to try and provoke with uh, Harima. And that could have worked, but that's not something that the AI will do on Oro. So right now, I just want to run this key on Oro uh, and uh, basically see what we're, uh, what we're getting out of it. I am assisting it, how I mentioned, targeting the, the heads every now and then. Harima dealt like 700k plus damage there. That was actually beautiful. That was actually very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. We just used the A2 from uh, to Hanarak. She has a lot of buffs right now. So the Head of Mischief is definitely uh, ready, ready to steal some of them, you know? I'm just hoping that Tuha will be able to use the A2 again before. So we got that Provoke on. A1, defense down. If no, I will have the A3 available from Ishinaki. Okay, I, I kind of expected this. I really expected this. Mishinaki A3. Beautiful. So we got that off. And now to Hanorak, we'll have to go in with the A2 in, a, in just a second. Uh, I need to check if she's booked. She might not be booked, guys. You know that? I actually haven't paid attention if she's booked or not. Now, if she's not booked, that's going to be a completely different story because by now, she's supposed to have that A2 available. It's on a three-turn cooldown. And she took three turns, and she only used it on the fourth turn. Which means that she might not be fully booked. But that's something that I haven't paid attention to. You see, that retaliation set coming in, uh, coming in uh, handy in here, putting the decrease speed on the head of Decay after uh, he hit us. Okay. So the head of Mischief is fine, is under control. We're about to take him down pretty, pretty soon. The head of, uh, the head of uh, Decay will probably cleanse in a second. I don't think I'm going to get that, uh, that provoke with Harima in time. Unfortunately, no. And if I'm not killing the head of Mischief before, uh, we're not dropping the Termiter, so there's really no, no chance for me to, to get that provoke in time. And it's, it's a shame because I really thought that maybe, maybe we're going to get it. There we go. A lucky save. All the Termiter from uh, St. Patrick and then get, having the increased speed as well, it helps a lot, guys. You know, it's, it's actually a massive, massive, uh, massive help to have this on. Turn 71, 35 million damage. So we are basically doing approximately half a million damage per turn. Which is not, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Right now, we got to target the head of Decay. I'm kind of like sharing this with you guys because that's how I'm, uh, uh, that's how I'm prioritizing what I'm doing, uh, even when I'm doing my own runs. The only difference is that uh, if I am trying to push a lot of points for the Hydra Clash, I'm manualing everything, you know, so uh, I'm spot on with, uh, with my runs. Uh, my champions are definitely built quite, uh, quite different than, uh, than this. Most of them are on Savage. Uh, the damage is definitely different, which makes my life easier because I kill the heads faster and I don't have to worry about them too much, you know. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with uh, with the result from uh, from this team. I was a bit worried that uh, the gear that he has might not allow us to do nightmare, but he had a lot of glyphs saved up. He probably had uh, like twenty plus six star speed glyphs. Same with accuracy, defense, HP. And he had like 30 plus on the five star glyphs. And he said he's been saving them for this moment. So he's been saving them for quite a while, you know. He's definitely been saving them for quite a while. 40 million damage. We reached the, the one key, guys. But you know what? He is trying to maximize the damage too for the Hydra Clash. Why not? He's, you should be doing it, especially if you're in a clan where you can actually put your hand on a chest, regardless if he's top one, two, or three. Getting some of the 
getting some of the rewards from uh from the Hydra Clash is massive because you can get uh, either mythical books, either you can get the uh, primal uh, primal quartz to make a primal shard. Uh, Either uh, you just get the uh, accessories, which are still very, very important, you know. So right here, we've, we got to target uh, the head of uh, Torment to make sure we're freeing our Harima ASAP. She just provoked before, so we want to make sure we're going to get that skill on a cooldown before uh, we're going to have uh, the, head of, uh, the head of Decay returning, you know. Head of Red had increased attack. He just used the... Uh, the A3, or the A2, sorry, the, the, the big skill, he was not able to one-shot us, you know, so at least I'm not worried that we're gonna, we're gonna die. Having so many defensive characters in the, in the fight rather than attack-based nukers, uh, it does come with benefits. You don't have to worry so much about uh, constantly having to revive any of them or stuff like this, you know. So right now, I don't really care about who, who I'm targeting, you know, I'm, I can let them do, do whatever. Uh, the more the more damage we're getting, the more damage we're spreading on the on the rest as well, you know, with the hex. So let him do it. Like, look at all the continuous heals that we had on Harima, right? We had like four of them. You see, to Hanorak, just use the A2. I wish I would have had the A2 available right now. Uh, but these are things that are out of your control when you're doing a, a key on Oro, basically. That's uh, that's the price that you gotta pay. Okay, we go oh, I thought that we were going to get that one down. But now we have that down. So for the, uh, for the moment, right now, I would basically use the A1 on every of the champions on that head that's decapitated, just to increase the damage on Mishinaki, because the more he's using the A1 on that, on that head from the passive, the more damage we're getting, basically, you know? So that would be, that would be great. That provoke came in handy so good. The only problem that we have right now is that uh, we're going to uh, get overlapped by the head of decay. We just won't be able to. We won't be able to overlap that head anymore now. Even with that decreased speed on, we're not gonna be able to get the job done. So he's going to to cleanse. If if we're not getting termiter from uh, Patrick right now, if we are getting the termiter, we actually have a chance to overlap him with Harima again. Okay, okay, let's see. Probably, probably, she's going to go before. Ah, that fear. Okay, okay. But we don't have the A3 available, damn it, okay. I thought that we had the A3 available on Harima, but seems like we didn't. So the clan still happened. At least we have hacks on right now, and uh, we should be able to put the block buffs on, hopefully, beautiful. The provoke, so he's not going to get to shield. Hmm, this, this can be a bit of an issue. We lost the Termitor on Harima. So maybe he's gonna get to shield in the end. Okay, turn 151 million damage. I'll, I'll take this. But you know what, guys? You probably got the whole idea of how the run works. I'm gonna fast forward towards the end of the run where we're gonna see the total damage because we're already 16 minutes in. Unfortunately there, guys, we had a bit of bad RNG and the head of, uh, the head of suffering decided to Take the extra turn and uh, devour our Mishinaki. But still, we are on a we are on a pretty good track. I'm gonna stop the run here. We have 80 million damage, and uh, if the RNG was not that bad at that point, you know, we were gonna we were gonna continue to go all the way to the to the end. There's nothing really stopping us. Uh, the main thing that will stop us later on is when the heads start to devour our champions very very quick, you know, and that will happen. Once we get into the red turn uh, turn count, and uh, we won't have enough firepower to constantly free our champions from there with the damage that we have at the moment. But still, it's not a team that uh, will get to deal insane damage, considering what uh, we had on the account available and stuff, the gear and the rest of the things that allowed us to to push the damage. But I am pretty pretty satisfied with uh, with this result, you know. And uh, Elva, 384k damage. Get out of here! You're useless. You only healed for a uh, 4.1 million damage. Mishinaki, 27.8. The main source of damage, of course, is hacks for him. Harima, 13.8. That is her raw damage. Uh, very, very nice. Newt, 30.4. To Hanarak, 6.3. And we have Padrick with 797k. So look at to Hanarak. 
half of the damage from Harima to Hanarak is not even a damage dealer, no AoE attack either. But because we gave her that damage build, we actually just brought six, uh, six plus millions from, uh, from her, you know? Right, guys, so you probably remember the builds that we had on all of the champions. I just showed them to you before, right? So I had to burn a lot of, uh, a lot of glyphs. I had to burn a lot of oils. I had to burn a lot of dust to make sure we are re-rolling the gear. We got very unlucky with the dust. We had like 50, 51 dust and only one, uh, one essential got re-rolled to the, to the right thing. And the rest just got wasted, basically. Uh, a lot of glyphs, how I mentioned, and uh, yeah, let's start with the very first uh, champion, the fastest in the team, which will be to Hanarak. Now, basically, she's going to cleanse the fear. She's going to give us some uh, some buffs, put block uh, block buffs on the enemy, and give a uh, decrease attack to decrease speed. Total stats on to Hanarak: forty four thousand HP, three point eight K defense, three hundred speed, a hundred percent crit rate, hundred fifty seven crit damage, three hundred seventy seven accuracy. A lot of people don't know, but Tuhanarak can actually deal a bit of damage too with that uh, A2 and A1. So every little helps, guys. Now, we could have uh, done a different build and tried to get a lot of resistance on her as well. Because uh, her skills, right? So with A1, she places a continuous heal buff on the champion and on the ally with the lowest HP. Then the passive uh, basically removes uh, the debuffs. Now, this one can mess up your mischief target, her A1. Usually, this should go to the, to the uh, lead, the champion with the lowest HP. So if everybody's on full HP, it's going to go at the, at the lead champion. Then uh, Master is on her, guys. We have Offense and Support. We actually haven't changed the Masteries. He only has 300 gems, so I, uh, I didn't want it to burn them. I would have probably went for a Life Drinker and for a... Heart of Glory instead. But you know what? They are fine the way they are. It's not really going to completely change the game for him or anything like that. So we have her built on double perception and a retaliation set. Uh, the gear that he has available on the account is really not amazing. I uh, I feel like I was like Gandalf and made some miracles with the gear that he had to obtain the builds that we have. Of course, the oils to be able to ascend the gear made a bit of a difference. Uh, and the glyphs made the biggest possible difference, okay? So that is to Hanarak. Then if we're going to head over to the next ones, we have, of course, Elva. Uh, she is built on a four-piece protection set. We have a, a Resilience. Um, I wish I would have gave her a different, uh, a different set, honestly, but this is what we had left to make sure we're getting some decent speed. His speed gear sucks, by the way, so uh, we had to, to make it work like this. And uh, to get the resistance, right? So... Total stats, we have 62,000 HP, 3.2k defense, 295 speed, and we have 531 resistance. The reason why she's having the resistance, she's going to be the lead, and she's going to put perfect veil on herself. Most of the time, she will be the lowest HP because she is the lead, while the rest are on full HP, you know, so uh, the veil uh, should go to her for uh, the majority of the, of the time. She cleanses, she gives increased speed, you know, uh, immunity, which is actually very helpful to ensure that we're not constantly getting provoked or we're not constantly getting poisons or uh, weaken on us or different debuffs that the uh, Hydra Clan boss puts on us. But this one as well puts continuous heal on the ally with the lowest HP. Now, for the beginning of the fight, it's going to go uh, on her. We're not really going to have the best solution with the team for the mischief target, honestly. But considering that we're using champions that put block buffs, champions that remove buffs, is fine. We're going to be able to control uh, the mischief like that. Uh, we're going to have the speed aura from Elva. And um, masteries, we have defense and support three. Again, the masteries are fine the way they are. I haven't changed the masteries on her. Uh, there's not really a point to, to do that, you know. Then we have, of course, uh, Grand Oak Padrake. He is on a reflex and a speed set. His Relentless, again, is not good, not good enough to allow us to reach speeds like this. Total stats, we have um, 67k HP, 2.9k defense, 288 speed, no accuracy, no resistance, no damage, no nothing on him whatsoever because it's pretty uh, irrelevant anyway. Masteries, Offense and Support 3, Cycle of Magic, Lore of Steel, Lasting Gifts, War Master as a tier 6. It doesn't require accuracy though. Then the next champion in terms of uh, speed is Mishinaki. Uh, unfortunately, his Savage Gear is uh, nowhere to be found. So uh, we 
are going to struggle a bit with the damage because uh, we're not able to deal a lot uh, a lot of raw damage on the on the hydra heads you know without savage so this is the build that we have on mishinaki double perception a speed and we have a uh, 40 k hp 4.6 k defense 283 speed he needs to be one of the fastest to ensure that he's pulling the defense down uh, on the enemy full crit rate 239 crit damage 368 accuracy now if i was attempting to do something like this with savage probably we were going to get uh, 200 speed uh, and uh, yeah low accuracy nowhere close to these stats his best gear on the account is perception and that's because of the forge right most most of the people have perception as the best gear set on uh, on their account masteries we have offense and support three sniper uh, master hexer of course lord of steel to boost a bit of accuracy and the speed and we have a uh, War Master as a uh, tier 6 on a uh, Mishinaki, guys. Then we have uh, Harima, if I'm not mistaken. Again, she is on a double perception, a broken set. And we have uh, 34k HP, 4.9k defense, 268 speed, 99 crit rate, unfortunately, 249 crit damage, 367 accuracy. None of the Ascension worked out. On, uh, on any of the damage dealers, man. Like, I, I managed to get the boots, you know, but the rest of it, look, like this as well, gives me attack. We don't need attack. Why, why we don't have defense there, you know? So he's going to have to put in a lot of work to uh, reascend the gear, ascend uh, all the amulets for crit damage, preferably, or some other stats that will increase the damage on the, on the characters. Offense and support, I actually went with Hand Smasher, so he can use her in Arena as well. Yes, she's not going to deal insane damage in Arena because she doesn't have Savage, but she's going to be able to do a bit of work uh, if he encounters people of, uh, of his own level, basically, you know? And we have support, uh, Lord of Steel, Cycle of Magic for that 5% chance every now and then. Th she is the best provoker on, uh, on his account, you know? And uh, on a 3 turn cooldown, I had to make sure we have her as fast as possible to try and overlap the... Uh, head of Decay to ensure that we're keeping that head provoked, you know. And we have the last uh, champion, Newt. He is on Relentless, okay? This was the only Relentless set I managed to, to pull off. And look at the boots. The boots are awful for him, right? Like, they're just so bad for, uh, for what we're doing here. Yes, they're not awful, the boots, for uh, other champions. You know, like, if I want to use them on, uh, I don't know, Doom Priest, they're amazing. But for... Uh, for Newt, they're awful. No defense percentage, no crit rate, no crit damage. Thankfully, we managed to get this amazing gloves and we rolled the triple crit rate on here. Hopefully, the Ascension will give him better stats because at the moment, he is on 99 crit rate as well. A 52k HP, 4.5k defense, 247 speed, 211 crit damage, only 300 accuracy. Now, this accuracy is more or less still enough to uh, use him in the Fire Knight on hard mode, you know? So, uh... These builds that I made him for the Hydra will definitely be very useful for a lot of other content, not just for Hydra, you know, like, it's a difference, like, from day to night. That's how the builds look now after the, after the change, you know. And Masteries, Offense and Support 3, guys, we have a Giant Slayer as a Tier 6 on Newt, and, of course, Support 3 to get more uh, accuracy, but... These are all of the builds on the champions, guys. Let's see what we can do with them on Hydra Nightmare. If you are interested in a takeover, I do have a paid service for takeovers, guys. So these are not free takeovers. Uh, all the details are in Discord. Feel free to check that out if you're uh, interested. Much love. Appreciate every single one of you guys watching. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.